Hey guys, today we're going to be covering numerical data and more specifically dot plots and stem and leaf plots. Today's video has been brought to you by video games. So while you get to the lesson, Nugget and I are going to play some video games. So let's get to numerical data. So we're going to talk about specifically stem and leaf plots and dot plots. So let's get to dot plots first. So what is a dot plot? This is an example of a dot plot. So you have pretty much a number line at the bottom and then dots above it to represent how many people or how many number of boxes or, or whatever the other object is. So going up. So this would be a dot plot right here. This is the number of matches per box. So every box has how many matches. So one box had 45 matches. Another box, two boxes had 47 matches. One box had 48 matches, four boxes had 49 matches, seven boxes had 50 matches, three boxes had 51 matches, and that would make this one 52, so two boxes had 52 matches, even though it's not labeled. Now, this is something that you have seen in the past. Um, you may have actually even seen it with a key. So let's say that we have this dot, each dot represents five. So no longer is this one box has 45 matches, it's five boxes have 45 matches, it's 10 boxes have 47 matches, it's five boxes have 48 matches, and so on. So that's another way you may have seen a dot plot. So let's go into another dot plot. What I want you to do is I want you to create a number line at the bottom that looks like this. So I want you to, on your paper, and label it number of hours to complete Star Wars video games. So let's say you are going to complete a Star Wars video game and we took a list of players so you're gonna label it number of hours to complete Star Wars video game so let's say all these players come and they're going to complete the new Star Wars video game and they're on normal mode not on difficult mode but they're on normal mode and they're gonna complete this game and they time themselves to see how long is it gonna to take to complete this game so notice we don't have all of them numbered but this one's 12, this one's 13, what is gonna be in the middle? So what do you think goes there? Well, we can think about them, it takes one, two, three, four to go there. So we can think about these as fractions, or we can think about them as decimals. All right, so think about that, and now let's look at the data set, the numbers that we are going to put onto ours. So let's say all these players recorded how long it took them, and this is the amount of time it took them. Now notice they are decimals. They're not fractions, they are decimals. So we can put a decimals on here. So we have 25, 75, and 5. So what do you think those are labeled? I would think these are kind of like quarters. It takes four of them, four of them make a whole. So 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, a whole, a dollar. 12 and 25 hundredths, 12 and 50 hundredths, or 12 and 5 tenths, because that's the same thing and 12 and 75 hundredths. I want you to pause the screen and I want you to go ahead and put the dots on your number line right there and see if yours is going to match mine. Well, hopefully you paused it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go through these and I'm going to mark them. So let's say we have 14 and 25 hundredths. Notice I'm marking it out so I don't do it twice. 15 and 75 hundredths a dot above 15, a dot above 15 and 75 hundredths again. Notice I put it on top of the other one. 19 and 75 hundredths, way over there. 13 and 25 hundredths, 14, 17, 18 and 25 hundredths, 15 and 75 hundredths, 14 and 75 hundredths, 16 and 5 tenths, 15 and 5 tenths, 16, 12 and 75 hundredths, 15 and 16 and 5 tenths. Now notice where they're all clumped. So most people finished around 15 and 75 hundredths, or around 15 to 16 and 5 tenths. So around here. Now this person that's over here, this would be considered an outlier. It lies way out there by itself. So that was what we call an outlier. And then you had a couple people who must have really good at this game finished in 12 hours and 75 hundredths. So that's how long it took them to finish this video game. Because I know that's what uh, several of you are doing a lot of times on 
this little quarantine break. All right, so let's go ahead and ask some questions with this data set. So I want you to pause and I want you to think about this. So now your chart should look like mine and think, what is the difference between the number of players who took more than 15 hours to complete the video game and the number of players who took less than 15 hours? So hopefully you were able to pause and think about that question. So if it want, we want to know who the number of players who took more than 15 hours to complete the game and the number of players who took less than 15 hours, do we count 15? Is 15 more than 15? No. Is 15 less than 15? No. So we actually don't count 15. And we're, not, we're wanting the number of players. So let's count how many people are more than 15. So let's say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 people were more than 15. Again, we didn't count 15. We didn't count those two dots because that's not more than 15. Now let's see who, how many are less. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five. So if we have 10 people more than 15 and 5 people less than 15, what does that mean? We had 5 people, 5 more people took longer than 15 hours to complete the game than those that took less than 15 hours to complete the game. Alright, let's go to another question. What fraction of the students playing this game took less than 16 hours? Oh, what does that even mean? All right, I want you to pause. I want you to think and at least try it out. Okay, hopefully you're pausing. So we're looking for those that took less than 16 hours to complete the game. Again, does we, do we include 16? No. So let's count how many students took, or how many players took less than 16 hours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 11 people took less than 16 hours. So that would be our... Numerator, right. How many total people completed? 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it's going to be 11 seventeenths or 11 out of 17 people. So that's the number of the fraction that took less than 16 hours. All right, excellent. So that's it. Let's go on to our stem and leaf plot. So this is our stem and leaf plot. Let's think about this as the stem and the leaves. So this is going to represent what the stem is and these are the leaves. So this is the stem, these are the leaves. This over here, this key right here, tells us what our stem represents. So in this we have the 6 on the left, a 3 on the right, which means that it's going to be 63. So our stem in this example is going to be the tens place and our leaves are going to be the ones place. So if we look at this for example in this problem, we have one. So our stem is going to be the tens place, which is zero. So zero in the tens place, one in the ones place. So we don't have to list a zero in the tens place. So it's just one, one, two, two, three, four, four, and so on. So you'd finish that out as four, 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 five, and eight. For the next one, where our our stem is going to be in the tens place. We're going to have a one. So one in the tens place, and these are going to be our ones place. So we're going to have 10, 10, 10, 11, 11, 13, 17, and 19, and so on. And then our tens place right here is the two. So 25, 25, 27, 27, 28, 28, 29, 29. Next row, 3 is going to be our tens place. So it's going to be 30, 31, 31, 31, 32, 32, 32, 34, and 35. Next row, 4 is going to be in our tens place. So 40, 44, 48, 49. Next row, 5 is going to be in the tens place, so 52, 56, 57, 57, 58. In the next row, it's going to be 6 in the tens place, so 63, 66, and so forth. So this is how you would look at a stem and leaf plot. So it's a great way to look, list a bunch of numbers, and you have them in sequential order, and you can see these numbers in this order. So it's easier to look at the data and analyze the data than looking at a long list like this. That's basically all it is. Okay, so let's move on 
to this stem and leaf plot. Let's say I know that during this quarantine time, the number of hours of playing video games in a day has gone up. So I want you to go ahead and create this stem and leaf plot here. So you can have your stem over here, which is gonna put zero through seven over here, leaf over here, and you are going to use the key as zero over here, and then a fraction one fourth equals one fourth. Okay, so hopefully you pause and you have your chart now. So you have your stem and leaf plot ready to go. Now notice that this zero and this one fourth equals one fourth. So this means that this is actually going to be in our ones place. So the zero is the ones place. So the stem is the ones place. And everything else over here is going to be the tenths place or a fraction. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to list these numbers where you think they would go on the stem and leaf plot, knowing that the stem is going to be the ones place and the leaves are going to be the fraction or the tenths place. So I want you to go ahead and pause and think about it. Let's kind of go over the first row and check to see how you're doing. If I look here, I'm looking for how many zeros. So zero tells me I'm gonna have a zero in the ones place and a zero in the tenths place. So that would go over here as zero, zero. So this is what our number would actually look like. So zero. So some people don't even play video games in a day. That's all right, that's great. So you don't play video games and that's fine. So you would label that like that. And I have, no, I have two of those. So I should have two zeros on my stem and leaf plot. Yeah, so I can cross those out and I'm gonna have now let's look for the next one. I would look for the next smallest number. So do I have something else where a zero would be in my ones place? Well, yeah. So let's think about this on a number line. What would come next? So I know we have zero and one, and we're looking for something between zero and one. And let's think about this as our benchmark fraction. So one fourth, one half, three fourths, one whole. Well, do I have one fourth here? Yeah, I have a fourth right here. So we have one fourth. So I'm going to, so it would look like zero holes, so zero for my stem, one fourth for my leaf. So I'd put a one fourth there. And I can cross that over here. So do I have any more one fourths? Nope. But I do have a half. I have two halves. So I have two of them circled. So I'm going to have two halves, or two zero and one half, because our whole number is going to be zero. And so I'm gonna have two halves on my leaves. So two leaves, that's a half, so account for those two halves. I can cross those out. And so now I look, do I have any three-fourths? Well, I have three of those. I have three three-fourths. So three zero and three-fourths. So I can put three of those three-fourths over there. I can cross those out. And then that would be pretty much all of my zero as my whole numbers. So now you have the rest of them. I want you to see if you did not get this, I want you to see if you can pause and I want you to see if you can finish it now knowing what we just did. Well, hopefully you were able to pause if you didn't, if you're following along and you didn't need to, that's okay too. All right, so let's think about if our stem is one. So that means we're gonna have a one in the ones place. So let's see, we'd have zero, one and zero tenths one and one fourth, one and a half, one and a half, one and three fourths. So we have all of those and we cross those out. So notice we had a two with nothing on it, nothing to the right of it, so we just put a zero there. We had actually a couple of those, so we had two twos. We had two, one, two and one fourth, two and a half, two and a half, two and three fourths. So those counted for those. Let's go with our stem is three. If your stem was three, you should have three, two that are just three, and one that is three and a half. What if we have four? Oh, wait, now notice there are no fours over here. So do we put a zero for the four if there's no fours? No, we're actually going to skip it. We don't put a, anything there. It's just going to be blank to the right of that four because there's 
no letters. If we put a zero, that means there is a four over here, which there is no four, so we just leave a blank. So we go to the five, which is five and three fourths. So we just put the three fourths there, and our last one is going to be seven and three fourths, so we put a seven and three fourths. Now that person plays a lot of video games. Jeez, that's a lot of time spent in a day. Seven and three fourths hours, but you know, some people do it. All right. So that would be, again, our outlier on this question. All right, so let's go ahead and think about some questions. What are some questions we could ask for a stem and leaf plot? What could we do? Let's think about this. What is the sum of the three greatest number of hours played? So what's the sum of the three greatest number of hours played on video games a day? Go ahead and pause if you haven't already and solve this. All right, so let's think about the three greatest hours played. So top, we're going to think about the top three. So seven and three fourths, five and three fourths, three and a half. And we're going to add those three up. So let's write them over here to the right. So seven and three fourths, five and three fourths, three and a half. Now when we add fractions, what needs to be the same? Our denominators! So let's change it so our denominators are the same. So what do they have in common? Well, I could change this one to have a four, and which means that they'd all have four. And if I multiply my denominator by two to equal four, I have to multiply my numerator by two to make that three and two fourths. So now we have seven and three fourths plus five and three fourths plus three and two fourths. So we can just add those up. If we add our fractions, that is going to be three plus three is six plus two is eight. So that's eight fourths and seven plus five is 12, plus three is 15. So we have 15 and eight fourths. And you're right, that is an improper fraction. So we need to change that to a mixed number. Eight divided by four is two. So we have two more whole numbers right here in this fraction. So two plus five is 17. So now we have answered that question. Excellent. Let's go to our last question. What is the difference between the number of students who played video games more than two hours and the number of students who played fewer than two hours? So what is the difference between those two? Pause and solve. Okay, so if we're looking for the difference between the number of students who played more than two hours and the number of students who played less than two hours, are we including two hours? No. So we would actually just count all of these students. Now it doesn't want to know the fraction totals, it just wants to know the number of people. So each one of these leaves represent a different person. So we don't include two, so we're going to count all of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine were more than two hours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 were less than two hours. So we end up with 13 minus nine because we are looking for the difference between the two. So 13 minus nine is four. So four is the difference for between the number of students who played more than two hours and the number of students who played less than two hours. All right, well, that has been a numerical data video lesson. That's it. So let's get back to those little chickies. How are you doing that? You don't even have arms. <laughs>